Welcome to the 250 kilometer follow-up review of the InMotion V10F. So after 250 kilometers, the V10F is performing just like it was when it was brand new. And again, every time I jump on it, I'm reminded of how smooth a ride this is. Probably mostly down to the tire, but it just rides lovely. It's like a magic carpet. And a customer left a review and said it's like a Rolls Royce, which is another good analogy of it. It's a brilliant wheel and it rides very, very nicely and very smooth. The tire is for both on-road and off-road, and I've not found it lacking anywhere. I haven't had any slipping, sliding, nothing like that at all. It's worked well across all terrains. In the rain, mud, summer, you know, hot weather. We've had some lovely weather in the last couple of weeks, and the tarmac's been nice and hot, and it's been performing absolutely fine, and it's wearing really well as well. The front light is very, very bright. It's, I've been out in sort of 11 o'clock at night, so it's pitch black through the woods with the dog, and it's more than enough to actually see where I'm going and go at a reasonable speed as well, so I want to slow down. So it's, it, its reach is quite significant for such a small unit. And actually the rear light is incredibly bright as well, and that's a red light obviously because it's at the back. So people can see you in the distance, both sides of you, front or back. The side lights, I tend to turn them off, I'm not one for uh, flashy lights really, um, and having the cover on, which you can get at speedyfeet.co.uk. Smooth. That's how the cover comes, like that. As you can see on the shots we've done, you've got the little cutouts ready for it, and it straps underneath the foot plate, it takes what? 30 seconds to fit. And it keeps it protected. And you get a little bit of extra padding as well, a bit higher up. I find that to be absolutely brilliant. In terms of scuffs and stuff, lob on the back seat of the car or behind the seat, this saves almost all areas of the wheel, apart from the underside of the foot plates and the very part, top part of the trolley handle. It actually protects the whole thing. I wish every single wheel had a cover um, that you could fit to it as an aftermarket part, because that is brilliant. I forgot the cover. I must go and get it. got the cover on that's all good you can get that from speedyfeet.co.uk and whilst you're at it why don't you go and give us a subscribe hit the bell notification go to instagram follow us there follow us on twitter and go to our facebook page and any other social channels that become available links in the description i have found this trolley handle to be exceedingly good it's been really really good now i found this clip here doesn't even when dropping it on its side it doesn't pop out of that at all. It sits in there, holds it nice and tight. This rubber section here is just wide enough that you can lean this against a wall. And the actual body of the unit isn't leaning against the wall and this is taking the pressure essentially. And it doesn't, doesn't mark up the wall either and it is very grippy. So it doesn't just slip forward or slip down. It holds it in place just by the material that's on the end here. If that was metal, you prop it up, turn this off, and it slowly lean forward, as some of them do. This one is just gripping it in position, so I found that to be absolutely spot on. Um, there's no wear on that mechanism at all. You push button, job done. So it stays in, put it up, you hear a click. That locks it in position, so it can't come down. Press the side, 
Oh, as easy as that. All of the buttons are flush, really, really nicely finished. Uh, really good standard of production there. And there's been no water ingress, there's been no failure of those buttons, they work absolutely fine. The only thing is, just lift the trolley handle up to get to the back cover, which is where the charge port is. And ideally that needs to be up, otherwise you can plug it in, you can lean it on it, but I don't like leaning it on there at all, because it's putting pressure on the thing, not much, it's only light, but I'm not very comfortable with that. So I always do that, plug it in, job done. And then you have to push this back in and make sure you've got it all the way in, and then you don't get any water in there, which is pretty neat. And that's the only two places where you could potentially get water in there. Um, that's nice and sealed, and that's sealed, so no issues there. The foot plates, due to the size of them, have been, well that's what adds to the ride really. Uh, the tyre is one of those things that makes it a nice and smooth ride, added to the fact that these have got a rubber cover over the top of the foot plates. So they're nice big foot plates that support your entire foot, and then you've got rubber underneath. So you add to that sole of your shoe, and that tyre, and it makes for an amazing ride all over. They are high enough off the ground, I haven't really scuffed them that much. They got some scuffing on there, because it's had a big crash, didn't I, when we did a race against the V10. If you haven't watched that video, go and watch it. I suspect it's linked up here somewhere right now. And go and watch that. That's really where they got the scuffs from. They're high enough to do tight turns, and comfortable enough to do long rides. So as a thumbs up for those. One thing I don't think I talked about on the original unboxing was the fact this has actually got speakers, and they are at the front and the back. And it's a separate system, so you can connect to the wheel via Bluetooth through the app, but then also it's got a headset function essentially, which you go to your Bluetooth settings on your phone and then you can connect to the speaker system. Now, I'm not an advocate for playing loud music as so you're traveling around, because you're just gonna pee everyone off, but it is good for phone notifications. So if you've got your phone in your pocket, for an app such as Map My Ride, which I use, it does readouts, so it lets you know every mile or every five miles um, and how long you've been riding. And what this will do, of course, is it will amplify it through the speakers. So every mile or so, it'll say, you have been one mile over such such distance, such such a time. Um, so you get all those readouts, split times and everything, which will be louder than your mobile phone. Especially useful if you're putting headphones on because you can't hear your phone. And then when you put headphones on, you, it gets quite dangerous because you can't hear any of the warnings or anything coming from this device. So that would be the recommended approach. So it has got speakers and you can connect to them and they're nice and clear for the size of them. slight criticism I got this wheel is how loud the high speed warning is. Now that can be a benefit if you've got a full head helmet on, but it has to be said, it is incredibly loud and it kind of makes you jump. And the reason for that is most wheels I've ridden, they do the tilt back, you can start to feel it tilt back and if you keep on going, it then shouts at you. This shouts at you first and then you start to get a tilt back. So it does actually make you jump each time. You can't seem to condition yourself to get used to it. Part of the reason for that is it's not always at the same speed. So it monitors battery percentage versus the top speed it allow you to do. So that brings me to another point that you can do 25 miles an hour maximum on the V10F, which is cracking along some, isn't it? But as soon as that battery percentage comes down, it dials off that top speed. So you can only use the 25 miles an hour for a short while, essentially. So around about down to 75%, 80%, and then it starts to dial back bit by bit. Now that isn't unusual for wheels, so I'm just I'm reviewing this one, I'm mentioning it, loads of other wheels do exactly the same thing. But then it makes that high speed alarm variable depending on battery percentage. So you can be doing a ride and you're used to it, you can hear what sort of speed you're going and you try and stick to it. At some point, 
your full foul of it and it'll shout at you to slow down. Um, so that can be a little bit annoying. There's a lot of complaints about the alarms. It's either that they're too quiet or that they're too loud. Can't seem to get it right. I think what they should do is introduce a helmet mode. So you have real loud when you've got a helmet on and if you're just too pooling around at 10 miles an hour, then you might have that untick so it's slightly quieter. But that's it really. So I'm gonna crack on and get to 650 kilometers and do another review. But as it happens, it's working absolutely flawlessly. No issues whatsoever. As with all manufacturers, what I'd love them to do is get a charger that charges it faster. And you start to notice when the pressure's on to try and get the mileage on these machines. We're testing all these different machines. Really, you want to charge up a lot quicker. Twice the speed would be fine and it wouldn't be pushing it. I mean, sort of three amp charge would be ideal. Twice as quick kind of thing. So um, yeah, there are port splitters and stuff. We do them on the site, speedyfeet.co.uk. Not for this one but for the Gotway stuff we do them. So it is possible to double up, get a second charger, but I wish to just bring it out with a more powerful charger. Now the battery's getting much bigger. So I will crack on and get this up to 650 kilometers and report back to you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell notification and go to all our social channels, link below and go and follow all those. See you guys later.